What went fighting like, Joe? Was you at Waterloo? If you're going to say Battle of Waterloo, you've got to experience what that battle was like. We then have three pyro hits along the top of the ridge, which will be just a loud thump with a load of dirt being thrown up in the air. It's a great way to open a Mike Lee film, that's all I can say. A very dynamic, visual way to open a Mike Lee film right in the midst of the Battle of Waterloo. It doesn't matter if you're aiming slightly up the slope, because it's still, it'll still read on camera. Mike wanted to create this single shot that will bring you into the film quite sort of visceral. We're trying to create as much chaos as we can within a single frame. So it's bringing in horses, stunts, musket fire, flames, explosions. It's very unmike Lee in a way. Each film for me is different. Each film presents a different set of problems and I try and deliver a different dish every time I make a film. So in that sense, this film is no exception except for its scale. At a certain point in pre-production, Mike said, ah, we're going to start the film with the Battle of Waterloo. <laughs> and I looked at my costume designer and <laughs> the first idea, we were like, oh, okay. But actually what Mike's done so beautifully is distill it into what turned out to be one shot, but it's so powerful. Well, it's just seeing, seeing through it's it. It's acting, seeing through seeing it. Seeing through yeah. it, yeah. Mike said, you are playing a fictional character, and we came up with him from scratch. But there definitely would have been people at Waterloo and then did end up at Peterloo. There's one famous case of a guy called John Lees from Oldham who survived Waterloo and who was at Peterloo. That's the source of the character played by David Morse. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. On my part of it is to make sure the guys are doing what they would have done, the tactics and the drill that they would have employed at that time in the Napoleonic era. This is musket drill, completely different. You hold the weapons differently and there's a different set of moves. It's an India pattern musket. Certainly isn't renowned for accuracy, but you could have as many as six or 7,000 men firing at any one time. So they could actually produce a whole wall of lead towards the enemy and the wounds themselves were quite hideous in those days. You had a dirty, sooty lead ball flying through the air would punch through dirty clothing, and there were far more people actually died from attributed blood poisonings than there were dying from initial gunshot wounds in those days. It was great to do that battle, but essential that it was absolutely brief, to the point, and simple. And then we get on with the film. And of course, the other thing is we see the guys walking home. This is the extraordinary thing. They simply left them to their own devices. They had to find their own way back to England. The journey from Waterloo to Peterloo is via the word field. So you get St Peter's Field and the battlefield of Waterloo. Um, people started saying Waterloo was a battle, but at least it was man to man. At least it was, you know, one on one as it were. Peterloo is just murder. <laughs> This Peterloo project was, I would say, on a scale that I have never photographed before for any director, but Mike was insistent that he would retain his method of work, making it up as he goes along, and the rehearsal and improvisation with the actors, albeit be in a small room with two people and one person, or it be a crowd of 60,000. He didn't change his working practices. You have to have nerves of steel. I think certainly for some crew members who aren't used to working in this way with no script, no storyboard for the whole thing, it's daunting, but it's tried and tested, and I think the massacre sequences feel brutal, and I think we've done that justice. What worries me is that, you know, that, that, but not, we don't see that. To be honest, I have spent a large part of my professional life resisting fight directors, stunt people, because people come with their ready-made stunts off the peg. Now, that isn't to say that the guys that did it didn't come with experience off the peg, so to speak, but they were able to work with me and I with them to not make it look like what it very often does in movies, a bunch of clichés. Keep that flag on flight! It was a difficult job for me, obviously, because it's of the scale of the thing, but it was never daunting in the sense, it was never impossible, because you simply, we took it steadily through each section, and, you know, filmmaking is teamwork, and if you have the kind of team we had, uh, you can do anything. Because of the way Mike works, you know, he tries to be realistic. So 
realistic violence is, is, is quite horrible, strange thing. It leaves you rather numb. You see it, and it sort of took my breath away. It's painful. I mean, in that way that you get so angry, you feel your chest tightening with the anger of what happened and how horrific and brutal and relentless it was. Come on!